Yes, it's time for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, sport, showbiz and beyond. Tonight, former Labour MP and best-selling author Simon Danchuk. Simon grew up in Lancashire, where he began his working life at the age of 16 in a factory making gas fires before going back to education as a mature student. There followed a glittering career in research, public affairs and communications before he entered the House of Commons in 2010. Famously, he won the seat of Rochdale, despite a microphone picking up the then Prime Minister Gordon Brown calling Rochdale resident Gillian Duffy a bigoted woman. Do you remember that? Well, he still won his seat. Simon was very successful in that constituency, taking his majority of just under 900 in 2010 to 12,500 five years later. The Financial Times described Simon as Jeremy Corbyn's most outspoken internal critic. And Simon gained admiration for his work and his book, Exposing Child Sexual Abuse, committed by former Rochdale MP Cyril Smith. He also helped expose the Rochdale grooming gangs who had been operating for years in the area. Following a bit of a Barney with Labour, he resigned from the party in 2017, after which he began a new career as a political commentator and author. Um, his latest book is called Scandal at Dolphin Square. It is non-fiction, but reads like a political thrill. It's winning rave reviews, and it's out now. Simon Danchuk, welcome to Mark Dolan tonight. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Why politics? You're far too talented for that. Well, I enjoy uh, having an impact and helping people, and I've been a local councillor. I was a councillor in Blackburn uh, for a number of years. I got a taste for, for helping people, and, and the natural progression was to go into Parliament. OK, uh, 2010, uh, an interesting time uh, to enter the House of Commons um, in, in, in Rochdale. Uh, what was your early experience of life in Parliament? Oh, it's an unusual place. I didn't take to it too well, actually. So for a working class guy like myself to enter that place, it is an unusual place. So it took some... Does anyone show you the ropes? To... Well, you, they, they do have an induction programme, but it's inadequate, I would say. But nevertheless, it's a fascinating place and you can have a real impact. On and, that. and the first, the first, the first sort of maybe 28, 48 hours, you know, you, you've won this seat, which is a triumph for you personally, but you're thinking, is there going to be a Labour government? Now, Gordon yeah. Brown was holed up at number 10 That's right. in a stakeout situation, trying to broker some kind of deal, a minority agreement. It didn't happen. So, so that must have been a strange way for you to start your your parliamentary career, not knowing whether it was going to be a Labour or a coalition government. Yeah, that's right. And I remember Jack Straw ringing me up. He was ringing round uh, Labour MPs to see whether they wanted to go into a coalition with the Liberal Democrats. I'd just been fighting the Liberal Democrats tooth and nail in Rochdale and managed to beat them. So I wasn't enthusiastic about a, a coalition with the Liberal Democrats at all. And I think it was the right decision not to go with that. Indeed. Um, you fell out with uh, the man that will become leader later, Jeremy. Corbyn. What's your appraisal of the damage he did to the Labour cause? Oh, massive. I, I mean, it's incredible the amount of uh, damage he did to the Labour cause. I, I've always, I was always a traditional Labour MP, traditional values, traditional uh, Labour values. Like, like a so-called, uh, like a red wall uh, sort of Labour MP? Yeah, exactly. That would be my take on it. And, and what we've got now with Kia is, and it's been replicated in years gone by, really, but Keir, uh, who is a nice person, a good person, uh, but is what I would describe as soft left. Mm. Uh, and so he's soft on uh, illegal immigration, he's soft on dodgy benefit claimants, he's soft on law and order. And what he really will promote, and this is my concern, and it follows on from this sort of North London view of the world, where Corbyn is, where Ed Which Miliband is perhaps are. a bit woke. Well, exactly. And they perpetuate, uh, Kia will perpetuate that sort of agenda. Mm. And we've, we've now got uh, the lef left-wing establishment infiltrating public uh, institutions, our public services, and pushing this particular woke agenda. And that gives me real concern because I, I have a worry that if uh, Kia wins the next general election, then he will perpetuate that view. He will be a flag bearer uh, for, the, for the soft left, for the left-wing establishment that currently exists. Uh, yes, this is, uh, you know, obviously he, he's, he's got his, uh, his, his gifts. Um, he's ahead in the polls and he certainly got on top of the anti-Semitism scandal within the Labour Party. Uh, he's evicted Jeremy Corbyn, which I'm sure you'll support. But he also cannot define on camera what a woman is. He, will, he said that uh, saying that only women have a cervix is something you shouldn't say. 
Uh, I thought he was quite weak in his uh, de- defence of or support of Rosie Duffield, who, who has simply been vilified by many in the Labour movement uh, for pointing out that there is a difference between the two biological sexes. Mm. Yeah, and, and this is my concern. He, he has a walk agenda and that will be perpetuated uh, should he win the general election. So people need to be really careful about what decisions they make uh, come the next general election. Well, who would you, who would you tell your ex-constituents to vote for? I, I haven't decided how I will vote mm. at the next election uh, but I, I think I will be struggling to vote for Keir and, and for that for could you for could you government. go and I'm not going to compare you directly don't worry but could you go on a sort of on a parallel journey to someone like Lee Anderson who was a Labour supporter for decades and who yeah. is now who is now uh, in the Midlands as a Conservative MP I have a lot of admiration for Lee Anderson and mm. I, I did a tweet just a few weeks ago people were being critical of him uh, being vice chairman of the Conservative Party but I, I put out a tweet saying uh, whilst I haven't decided how I'm going to vote, him becoming the vice chairman of the Conservative Party makes me more likely to vote for them, not less likely to vote for them. We need working people to have a real representation in Parliament, and they, we just don't get that from uh, from the Labour Party at the moment. I know you're really busy writing your next book, which is fiction, which I'm looking forward to. Um, would you consider, would you countenance a return uh, to to uh, to politics uh, and and possibly have a run at uh, uh, run at uh, getting into Parliament again? I haven't really considered it. It's not something that's on my immediate agenda, that's for sure. Right. So do you, do you feel like you've achieved those ambitions and you're ready for new challenges? Or... Yeah. Is yes. it never say never, though? Well, you never say never, do you? Because you don't know how life turns out and I, yeah, what happens. I, do, like... I just wonder whether the party managers at the Conservative, uh, Conservative uh, Association will be you know, put central office, we're watching this now going, right, we better reach out to, to Anchuk. Well, that I'll let you know. be a feather in our cap. Yeah, well, I'll let you know if they do, but uh, I haven't had a phone call. Could, like they, that, could yeah. they potentially court your interest? Oh, I've, uh, well, I, I sympathise with a lot of what the Conservative Party stands for now. I think mm. they need to toughen up a little bit as well. There are some people in the Conservative Party who are having doubts about the small boats legislation. Mm. I just don't get that. They need to be uh, more forthright in terms of pushing a Conservative agenda. Uh, what is your appraisal of, of the, the, the deal with Emmanuel Macron? It's going to cost us half a billion over the next couple of years. Uh, and, of course, uh, legislation which will mean anybody that enters the country illegally is not granted asylum. Um, yeah, what, what's your hot take on that? I support the legislation. I think it's... Uh comprehensive. I think Suella Braverman should be credited with what she's doing in terms of the legislation. Mm. There has to be a solution. Labour aren't even offering any solutions. And I'm in no doubt that if we have a Labour government at the next general election, then they will be soft on illegal immigration. And that's just not acceptable. We have to have a solution. The idea of sending people to Rwanda, a country I know very well, uh, is an excellent policy. And if this legislation enables the government to be able to do that, then I think it should be welcome. Uh, do you think that a Labour leader with your values will be coming anytime soon? You know, I can see a scenario actually where Rishi Sunak is a little bit like John Major, where he wins the next general election. By a whisker. By a whisker, absolutely. But there are various factors at play in that. I think he could win it, uh, retain power for the Conservatives, and then it would be for Labour to change uh, from a Neil Kinnock type figure mm. uh, in, uh, in Keir Starmer to, to somebody who's more new Labour. OK, and you're writing a book, so... Um, yes. N- uh, it's fiction. Yes. Can you give me a flavour of the, yeah, the it's subject all, matter? It's all about politics and power and sex in the north of England. It's purely fictitious. Yeah, yeah well, listen, it'll, it'll be fascinating, right? Because I had a little go. I've, I've been so busy, I haven't a chance to read uh, all of your latest book because uh, we had you on a few weeks ago when you were plugging it. But um, you've, you've had a colourful private life. Mm. Um, and you'd have been a public figure, a politician, a, a famous girlfriend that became a wife. She's your ex now. Mm. Um, but you, you, know, you were both splashed all over the papers. Was that hard for you on a personal level? It, it was at times, yeah, and I, I suffered from some depression from it. Uh, but then uh, eventually recovered and, mm. uh, and, you know, have a healthy, healthy life now. But, uh, mm. yeah, it can be difficult to deal with. Well, let me tell you, you are the picture of health. And I know you've got you. four lovely kids to show for it as well. So wish you well in the family. Come back and see us soon. Thank you. There you go. Simon Danchuk there, very critical of the current uh, Labour incumbent.